What's up, Tube Tube? Alright, welcome back. We got the um, APS gearbox on the bench still here. Now, uh, it was brought up uh, yesterday when I was doing this video um, that I compared a V2 box to a to a Gen 8 box, which is pretty unfair. Like, you know, yeah, I grabbed it because it was on the bench next to me at the time, but we should really be comparing a V2 type gearbox to a V2 type gearbox, right? So, um, yeah, fair, fair call. Um, it doesn't change a thing though. Um, <laughs> what we've got here is boxes designed for airsoft and boxes designed for gel blasters. And if you watched my previous video, you'll see that um, I noted that the movement here in this tappet plate is seven millimeters from there to there now i can i can i can measure that by um uh, measuring the depth there zeroing it and then pushing it down there and that will give me negative 6.9 or 7 millimeters close to 7 millimeters 6.9 millimeters and um, with the gel blaster one the movement of the nozzle is is a lot more uh, closer to like I think when I measured the gen 8 one it was about 12 millimeters or something like that so what I'm going to do here same thing Let's push, push this here, zero it, and then I'm going to push this one all the way in, and, oh, hang on, I need to actually have it hit, there we go, all the way in, and take that measurement. Now, that measurement is... 9.4 on the wells so basically i mean you don't have to be uh, you don't have to be a genius to see this uh when the two nozzles are out they're fairly um you know fairly close to the same distance let's say about there and then when you push this nozzle all the way in it moves back that far and then when you push the gel blaster nozzle all the way in, you can see the travel is, there's so much more travel. It goes out further, it comes in more. And of course that's because the gel balls are larger in diameter. So, V2 versus V2 type box. Um, just for those who wanted to see that, as opposed to comparing it to the Gen 8. For what it's worth, it's more or less the same. Uh, Gen 9 is pretty much the same as well. See the Gen 9 here. Um, let's do it. Let's measure it for the science. Um, okay. Zero that one there. Alright, so the Gen 9... Uh, much like the Gen 8 that I measured yesterday, pushes back a full 12 millimeters. So, so the uh, travel on the wells uh, is actually not quite as much as the Gen 9. The Gen 9, the travel on the Gen 9 is huge, and that's why you never put a delay chip in a Gen 9. The delay chip on the on the wells actually works okay. But yeah, if you ever put a delay chip in a Gen 9 or a Gen 8 blaster, yeah, yeah there's no need. The, the, the travel on this thing is so huge that it creates its own uh, dwell as a result of the travel. Uh, now, just so you can see these, all very similar design gearboxes. You could pile them on top of each other and... Uh, the Gen 9 actually is, you can see here, it's, it's slightly different at the back here. Um, it 
the it comes a bit further back here and um, and it's a bit longer at the back here. So the Gen 9 is actually a slightly longer gearbox than than the V2 if you overlay them um, or if you line them up at the back here you'll see that they actually the Gen 9 is longer in the front end and the Gen 9 is longer in the front end guess why guess why it's for that exact reason that we were just talking about it's to give that extra travel you notice the thickness of this here is much thicker than the area on the V2 box and that's because in that cylinder head this nozzle's got to travel 12 millimeters whereas this one's only got to travel 7 millimeters um, and that's basically why we can't have V2 boxes in gel blasters. We can't have it because they don't phys they're not built with the physical with the travel. So everyone's been sort of pushing towards this movement for standardization of gearboxes uh, to make them all V2s. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't work because they have to have the the more play uh, the the more longer travel for the um, gel to feed into the cylinder. Now, how does the wells work then? Because the wells is, is basically exact dimensions of a V2. The V2s, it's like pretty much identical dimensions, like, like bang on, they're sitting on top of each other, they're pretty much bang on. Then how is it that the wells can have all this play, all this range of motion on the nozzle when the V2 can't physically, it can't do it because you can see the tappet plate moves from hard up against the cylinder to hard up against the gearbox, see? Now I have heard of people shaving this tappet plate down so that they can get that extra I don't know, millimeter or, or something of of travel that they need um, to get this. I have actually even seen people who cut a little bit out of the cylinder here so that the um, the tappet plate can go back further. And both of those are viable options. Um, however, I don't particularly want to do either of them. Because A, I don't want to cut into the cylinder because, I don't know, it's just a little bit messy. And B, I don't want to trim the, um, I don't want to trim the tappet plate because uh, it weakens the tappet plate. You, you, it, I'm sure it'll be okay, but I don't know, the more meat you take out of it, the weaker it's going to get. Um, no surprises there. So... What's going on with this one? How come this one's got so much movement here? And and here's what it is. The cylinder head space in the wells is the same, uh, roughly. Let's, I mean, it's plastic, so it might even be a bit thicker to, to, to take into account for that. But um, we've got 13 millimetres there and look 13 millimeters there so the well there's when the when wells made this gearbox they actually designed it so much off of the v2 that they even went to the exact dimensions of the cylinder head here uh so if that's got the small cylinder head why is it able to um have this extra motion it's because of the cylinder placement you can see, if you look at this, you can see that the cylinder head is larger. Uh, you've got, I want to say 11 millimeters cylinder head there, whereas here you've only got nine and a half. But, so the gearboxes are the same dimensions. The cylinder head in this one is bigger, and therefore the cylinder sits further back. 
don't know if you can see that. So if I line this cylinder up with that cylinder, you can see it's actually shorter. So the Wells blaster has a shortened cylinder to allow for a bigger cylinder head. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm putting the shortened well cylinder and the new Wells cylinder head. I actually have to give a shout out to uh, Richard Gill for hooking me up with this aluminium cylinder head for the wells um, because that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to use the well cylinder, the well cylinder head in the APS gearbox and I'm going to look at the tapper plates. I might end up using the wells tapper plate um, with some modifications in the APS box but I I'm pretty much made up my mind that um, it's definitely going to be the Wells cylinder head in there and the Wells cylinder. That's going to be the go. Alright, so straight away I can see something's not quite right. Oh no, it's a tight fit. Um, hmm, maybe not. Something's not quite right there, so... Let me see, 2.8 millimeters, and then the APS one, 2.6965, all right, so that hole is closer to the front there. So this cylinder head may need a little bit of modification. Um, I'll just grab this cylinder out of that Wells gearbox and line that up and see how that goes as well. So, look like the cylinder could maybe be, yep, that fits there. Alright, so it looks like I'm going to have to modify this hole a little bit. Might just have to file out a tiny little bit of this hole. Uh, enable in, in order to get it to sit in there because it's like uh, 0.1 of a millimeter or something further back than the one on the uh, APS. So close, so close, but not quite there. Okay, so I literally just ran a um, a drill bit uh, through there. A uh, I want to say a five millimeter, maybe because it's four point nine five millimeters. So I ran a um, small drill bit. Let me just check. I just grabbed the one which was the closest fit. Um, it is a five. I just ran a five. 5 mil drill bit through there is like literally the tiniest, tiniest little bit of meat taken out. Like, if anything, it was just scratching the surface. This tiny, tiny little uh, bit of meat taken out. And that's just enough to get this to pop in there nicely. Um, the, yeah. The Airsoft one was, or the a APS one was just a tiny, tiny little bit closer to the front. So it just needed 
the tiniest little bit of metal taken off of that and I did I did think about just try try to file a little bit out of the front of the hole but then I, I thought yeah it's just gonna be easier and neater just to open that hole up like like 0 0.1 of a millimeter or something I mean the hole was was already uh, it was like 4.8 or something I took it out to 4.9 uh, so it was just enough just enough to get that to fit in there nicely uh, I'm gonna get rid of these this Gen 9 because I don't need it here. So now that fits perfectly in there. Plus, um, between the cylinder and the front of the gearbox, I've got 13 millimeters minus the thickness of the tappet plate. So we're gonna have we're gonna end up with like a well if I was to use this tablet plate which I'm probably not uh, this is like 2.5 mil tablet plate so we're gonna have 10 mils of movement in there which is what the wells had originally so that should work I'm thinking that I'm probably just gonna run the wells tablet plate as well because hey well it was designed for it so why not run it. Uh, I'm just going to have to take the Dremel and cut this uh, big thing off the front of it. Incidentally, it's a legacy piece uh, from the old mags. The old mags used to use a um, mechanical feed. It had a, like a push button in the mag. This piece would rock back and forth inside the mag, in the top of the mag, and go click, 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 and push the next one up. Uh, why they left it on there with electronic mags? Is, is beyond me, but it's there and it won't be for much longer. Okay, so I got my Dremel and Dremel the, uh, that, uh, mag priming thing off of the Wells tablet plate. And I'm ready to go. Almost. Ah, the plot thickens. So let's have a look here. We got one half of the APS box there and one half of the Wells box here. And as you can see, external dimensions bang on. Even this skinny uh, section here for the cylinder head bang on. Everything is identical, like straight up identical. Is it? No, unfortunately. Um, so as you can see here, if I put the tablet plate into the standard rail for the wells, I can move it back all the way to there. Can you see that? Let me let me take a measurement of that just so you can see a bit better. So from the front of the box to the tappet plate's fully back position, eleven point three millimeters. And I put the tappet plate into here and push it back as far as it goes. See what's going on here, right? 6.45 millimeters. So, despite the fact that the boxes are identical, di um, identical dimensions, the sliding rail for the Wells tablet plate, knowing that the tablet plate has to go back further, the rail is actually, you see it ends just there. So on the APS, the rail ends there. So you can see, that's a good shot there. Obviously you can see the difference there. So this notch in the rail uh, for the APS box is going to have to be dremeled out so that I can get the full movement of that tappet plate uh, when I put the um, the new cylinder in there even though the cylinder's got the space I'm going to have to bring the uh, bring that rail back a little bit just a smidge it's like 
It's a game of millimetres, my friends. Millimetres. There's not much in it. Now, I have been reading all the comments and seeing what people are saying on the internet and all that sort of stuff. And, uh... I... I think a lot of people are under the impression that I'm having a lot of trouble fitting this in. I would... I wouldn't use those words. I wouldn't say that I'm having trouble. Uh, it's not... I mean, I, I, I'm just highlighting the amount of effort and every tiny little detail that has to be uh, changed here. Like, it's not... Uh, it's, it, it'll work. I'll get it to work. That's not an issue. But, um, yeah, like, there's there's a lot of ways to skin cats and this is the approach that I'm taking and I'm trying to show everyone here exactly what I'm doing and I mean there is an easier way to do this I, I could just get the Dremel out and take this take this little corner piece off here but I don't want to weaken the structure of the tappet plate so I'm not going to do that so here's the thing right so watch the tappet plate here I can bring this tapper plate all the way back to the front of the cylinder there. Nice. Full movement. Full range of motion. Full, I think it was like 10 or 11 millimeters. All right, so, I mean, all the little things. I'm just, just trying to um, highlight all the little things. Like just, just the fraction of a millimeter, the bees dick that I had to drill out of this hole just so that it would fit in, you know, just all these little things. Um, often it's, th it's things that I'll just do without even questioning or asking or whatever, just, just go ahead and do it. But I'm trying to highlight exactly what you have to do because there are a lot of people out there who have bought these boxes and they just can't get it to work. There are a lot of people who have bought them and they just get them in and they, and they work no problems and and yes, they've done things probably a little different to what I would do and I don't know, it works, it does the job. Anyway, moving on. You can see here in the APS box, I get to there and I can't, the tapper plate can't go back any further. Focus. Yeah, see, I can't get it all the way back to the front of the cylinder. So even with the Wells cylinder head and the wheels, Wells cylinder can't get it all the way back because of that rail just there. Now, like I said, the easy the easy way around would be to either drill that or to use the APS tapper plate. Um, I could do that. I could use the APS tapper plate. I just like that. The Wells type of plate profile has this early opening notch here. Just a little bit that opens it up a little bit more. Um, it might work with the APS type of plate. But um, I really want it to get that full gel blaster. Uh, range of movement where it's opening and closing at the right times for a gel blaster not for airsoft because the physics of the things are different and I just like to keep it as, as, as the same as possible because I know this one works I know this one works in the wells I know it feeds quite well even at ridiculous fire rates whereas this one the, the APS I I don't know so I'm looking at this uh, and I've got the APS type of plate. It looks nice and strong. It has a full range of motion, but it doesn't have the right profile on the tail. Um, so I'm thinking easy way or the hard way, and often the poor man pays twice. So if I decide that I'm going to go with the APS tap it, put this in like this, and then put it all back together, find it doesn't work in the way that I like, I have to pull it all apart again and put this one back in anyway. Okay, now, I've just been checking this out. Um, so, with this tappet plate from the wells, 
Once I take out a few millimeters of this rail and get full range of motion here, you can see when this is all the way back, it's got the tappet plate all the way back against the cylinder head all the way back as far as it can go full range of motion. Uh, when this piece of the tappet plate is all the way back. You can see that. That's the furthest back that it can go. Uh, now, I kind of really want to use this, uh, but you can see because of the different profile shape on this tappet plate, it's going to A, not go far back enough here to get the full range of motion, and B, if it does, it's going to impact the shaft there, which is also why you'll find the gel blaster tappet plates have been uh, trimmed off with that angle there. See, all these shapes, uh, they're made for a reason. There's a reason that this one is this shape and that one is that shape. Uh, <laughs> obviously the easiest thing is to chuck this one in and hope for the best. And it might work. Uh, that's not how I operate though, unfortunately. Uh, I've got to do everything precisely because that's who I am. Now here's my next issue. 13 and a half millimeters is the width of this tapper plate and 14 and a half is the width of this one. So the Wells is a one millimeter wider tapper plate than the APS, which means when I put this down in here, uh, it's too wide for the box. And this uh, here sits up a millimeter too high, a millimeter higher than I'd like it. And again, like I said, it's quite likely I could put this, I could just chuck this together and it might work. But that's not how I operate and that's not who I am. So I'm going to have to trim this plate down one millimeter to match the dimensions of this one. <sighs> Always doing things the hard way. That's the way I like it. All right, bear with me while I linish this. Okay, so now that I've brought this tapper plate down to a princely 13 and a half millimeters. All right, after much toing and froing there, I've got full range on the tappet plate. Um, got the gel blaster cylinder head there, everything. I think we're good to go. I think we're ready to put this back together. All right, so just got to get my um, return spring on and then we'll put it back together. Make sure all the shims are in their spots. Everything's happy. All right, I'll put the screws back in this box and then we'll take it to the test firing range. All right. All right, so I got this thing back together and it looks like it's doing good. We've got semi-auto fire. And... Full auto. Alright, I guess next thing we've got to do is chrono it. Alright, here we are, chrono test. APS gearbox. All right, 330 FPS, looks good. Let me just click that, max of 340, minimum of 270, and an average of 320. I think for something of this fire rate, that's actually you know, quite, quite a good result. All right, it's been a little bit of a saga, but I think we're finally there. This thing is an absolute beast. Uh, what can I say?
I'm glad you've been with me on this journey. Uh, let's recap. Mag terminals. You need to get them. <laughs> um, screws to hold the pistol grip to the gearbox. You need to get them. M3 from memory. Uh, best with a aluminium uh, Wells cylinder head and the 100% Wells cylinder. Uh, that gives you the, the good seal on the T-piece. Um, Wells tappet plate modified uh, to fit. Slight shaving of the internal rails inside the gearbox for the tappet plate. Um, what else we got? I think I think that covers it. I think that covers it. Mag is a little bit tight in there. I have seen some people suggest shaving a little bit off the mag release catch. I haven't done that. Um, I find the mag fits quite nicely. You just got to make sure it pushes all the way in. Uh, it is a tight fit, but it does fit. I think that's covered it. I think it's covered it. And that's all for me. All right. Buy me a coffee. Someone, please. Need caffeine over here. Alright, thanks for watching. Peace out.